of justice, and um, I'm, uh, I'm glad that uh, Musukwa uh, is going to uh, be testifying. Uh, Mrs. Mu is a member of the Sam Rainsy Party. Rainsy Party is an opposition party in Cambodia, uh, and it provides important opposition. Um, and it should be respected and have access, full access to the democratic uh, process in Cambodia without fear of intimidation. Um, she's chosen a harder and less rewarding path in life uh, than many uh, because she is very capable, but she's chosen uh, politics, uh, public service, uh, and um, she is dedicated to an ideal, and it's an ideal that uh, uh, believes that all humans are created equal, should be treated as such. That's the ideal that our country stands for. So uh, uh, with that, uh, I uh, again appreciate you having the hearing, uh, Chairman McGovern, and I want to thank the witnesses for being here, my colleagues, and uh, uh, the audience present who uh, understand how important this issue is. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Moran. I appreciate your statement. We're going to yield to Mr. Royce from California, because now he has uh, another appointment. We we'll want to have him make a statement. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for yielding. And I, I did have an opportunity, Mr. Chairman, to meet with um, uh, Parliamentarian Sue uh, uh, Koya, Musa Koya. And I, I wanted to express just um, the observation that uh, she is really risking much to be with us today. Uh, we know a lot about uh, the corruption that, that exists in her country, and in particular, the fact that the regime uh, stripped her of her parliamentary immunity uh, and, and that her own attorney was intimidated, was threatened, so that she did not have legal representation. Uh, and she was tried and convicted of op openly speaking out against the Prime Minister. Uh, and uh, so I, I thank her for her bravery. I also thank her for the work she's done in the past in terms of trying to expose something that I think a lot of journalists wrestle with. And that is why uh, the, the sex trafficking of uh, girls in Cambodia gets so little international attention. And I think it's, it's something we all wrestle with. Um, uh, the, the fact of the matter is it's become so endemic. It, it is it's so absolutely uh, horrific. Uh, my own chief of staff, Amy Porter, spent uh, some weeks in Cambodia uh, in Phnom Penh, working with some of these children who were uh, trafficking victims, uh, and talked to, to not not just about the cruelty to us when she got back from that trip, but the amount of corruption on the part of the government, and that indeed is why it continues. Uh, and it's it's a question of how do you bring pressure on a government uh, that decides uh, that it is not going to uh, be under the rule of law. Uh, the attempts to do that, and the attempts uh, in her position as a parliamentarian to call attention to this and as the former minister uh, in the government uh, speaking on, on women's issues uh, have, has only served to, uh, uh, to bring uh, a great deal of government oppression down on this particular parliamentarian. But in the meantime, we have this as an ongoing pervasive problem uh, in the society. As Voice of America reports, uh, you know, these girls are sold into brothels, forced to work as sex slaves, and their life is told by Von Sina, who was lured away from her village and into, into slavery at the age of 13, is a living hell. She was, she was locked in a cellar and tortured with electric shocks and starved if she didn't do exactly as she was told. So stories like this are heartbreaking. They're all too common. The question is, what can we do here in the U.S.? in order to elevate this issue, in order to bring the kind of pressure to bear on a country that we know it's going to be hard. I mean, 20,000 people last year were kicked off of their land and their, and their property simply confiscated by the government. You can have 130 families on a weekend pushed off of their land and the, 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 those who are friends in the government end up with the property. So that's the type of thing that's, that's going on as we speak in Cambodia. The question for us is in the middle of all of this incredible corruption and dysfunction that occurs with those who, who were originally involved in Pol Pot and now are involved in this government. How at the end of the day do you at least organize enough international attention and enough concern by the media that we put an end to what's happening to these girls in Cambodia? And so I thank the chairman for holding this hearing and I thank the witnesses, uh, especially for their bravery.
Thank you very much, Mr. Royce. Uh, when Hillary Clinton says it takes a village, I say it takes a bigger room. Uh, I mean, to those, I mean, those people on the hall, you're more than welcome to sit on the table or on the floor or wherever you might want to, you're more than welcome to kind of come into the room a little bit more if you'd like. And I'll, and I'll yield to my friend from Louisiana, Mr. Cow. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. And I would like to thank the uh, Tom Lantos uh, from mm -hmm. the Vice Commission for uh, holding this timely hearing for the human rights and the rule of law situation in Cambodia. Uh, as, a, as a Vietnamese refugee, I am certainly appreciate the plights of our neighbors in Cambodia. Experience has taught us that the first thing any tyrannical regime would do is to try to uh, silence its critics. And uh, it has occurred repeatedly not only in Cambodia but also in Vietnam and China. While condition in Cambodia has improved significantly since its dark and horrific days during the Pol Pot reign of terror, the Cambodian people are still a long way from being able to enjoy freedom or justice. Reports from the State Department as well as various NGOs indicate probable political motivation behind many killings and disappearances of people who hold op opposing views to that of the Cambodian government. Perpetrators of these killings and, di and disappearances have not been brought to justice. The dire fate of many political refugees who have been forcibly repatriated by the government of Cambodia is another source of concern to me. The Cambodian needs to recognize the rights of refugees under international laws and agreements. I especially want to commend Mrs. Mu Sakua for her courage in in your fight for equality and justice, especially uh, on behalf of the uh, women of Cambodia. I hope that members of the Vietnamese National Assembly also have the courage as you to speak out in the name of justice as you have. I admire your dedication and your tireless effort to help uh, your people. I also want to thank the panelists who you have dedicated a good part of your lives for the cause of human rights freedom and justice. I hope your dedication and tireless efforts will be rewarded with a free and, uh, and uh, prosperous Cambodia. Uh, I would love to remain here for the hearing, but I have a meeting with the White House uh, medical czar to discuss the health care reform, so uh, I have to leave. We're all, we're all happy about that. <laughs> Listen carefully. Yeah, listen carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Give them some advice. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And last but not least, I want to yield to my colleague from Massachusetts, who's been a, a, a valued member of this uh, Human Rights Commission, and who's been a leader on human rights issues, who cares deeply about uh, Cambodia and the Cambodian people, uh, Congresswoman Nikki Sargas. I want to thank um, Congressman McGovern for holding this hearing and um, for an opportunity to hear from those of you who are so concerned about what's happening in Cambodia. It's obviously significant and critical to the freedom of the Cambodian people, the way in which we honor uh, human rights and, and uh, political freedoms. But also, I represent a community that has the second largest Cambodian population in this country, and that is the city of Lowell, Massachusetts. So what happens in Cambodia is very, very important to so many uh, of my constituents because they remain quite concerned for the loved ones that have remained there, uh, many of their extended family members. So the concern is it is a village uh, in many, many ways, but most significantly because so many have, have out of necessity traveled from that country to this country and the connections remain very strong. So I look forward to your testimony. Uh, I look forward to making a trip to Cambodia before too long. I know it's a very beautiful country and one which will be much better understood by me once I'm there. So thank you again for your freedoms um, and your willingness to come forward and be very truthful about what's happened to you and what's happening in your country. And I look forward to your testimony. Thank you very much. And now we go to the testimony just to remind the uh, audience who is here. Uh, we have Moon, uh, Moon Sukua, uh, the member of, member of parliament of the San uh, Renzi party. We're honored to have you here. We have Pan Kek, the founder of Lakato. We have Moun Tola, the head of the Labor Program Community Legal Center. 